Hi, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to show you how to create a simple application and get it onto your Android device. So we're going to use Flash Builder 4.5. Here we are. Uh, we've started it up for the first time. And notice we have this start page, which lists a whole bunch of resources that you can review on your own time. First thing we want to do is go ahead and choose File and click New. And we're going to create a new Flex Mobile project. Now notice there are a number of things. If you've used Flash Builder 4 or Flex Builder 3, then you've seen some of these uh, Flex projects, Flex Library project, ActionScript projects. So new for 4.5 is the idea of a Flex mobile project or a ActionScript mobile project. Let's go ahead and choose Flex mobile project. And this opens the new project wizard. Let's go ahead and give this a name. And for this one, we're just going to call it Simple Application. And we'll go ahead and choose Next. Now, this is getting cut off here, but everything below here, there's just a couple of buttons, Back, Next, Cancel, and Finish. So you're not missing anything. Notice up here under Target Platforms, we have BlackBerry Tablet OS and Google Android. Now over here, people are thinking, hey, what about iOS? And I'm thinking, yeah, what about iOS? Well, this video is being made with the release version of Flash Builder 4.5, which will come out in May. And this currently does not contain the ability to create uh, MXML-based applications for the iOS platform. Now, technically, there are ways to do that, but using the current uh, project wizards, there's not a way to do that. You can create an ActionScript only project, and I'll show that in another video, that will let you run on the iOS device. So for now, we're just going to cover uh, BlackBerry and Android. So for now, I want to unselect BlackBerry tablet, and I'm just going to have Google Android selected. Under Application Template, go ahead and choose Blank. And the reason for that is um, there are three different MXML application tags that you can work with for mobile applications. And the first one we're going to cover is the blank one. Now down here under application settings, notice how it says automatically reorient. And the reason for that, um, if you change the device to landscape or to portrait, then you can have the UI automatically adjust. So we want to receive the reorient events so that we can maintain the state and change the UI accordingly. Now full screen, uh, basically if you're familiar with the Android devices, you have a status bar at the top, shows the clock and other things. If you want to hide that, you choose full screen. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now here's a third option. And this one says automatically scale application for different screen densities. Now this is a very helpful feature. And this is something we'll want to just automatically use. So go ahead and select that. And when it says application DPI, what they're saying is, let's say you're coding for a specific device and you know that the DPI is going to be around 240 or say it's an iPhone and it's you know the iPhone 4 and it would be 320. So most Android devices and tablets are 160. And you'll find there's a lot more to this. And of course, you can always click Learn More. But for our purposes, let's go ahead and keep it at 160. What this does is that it resizes everything so that when you go from one device to another that is a different DPI, the buttons and labels and everything else resize accordingly. And there's a lot more to it, but that's just kind of the basics. Over here under Application Template, next to it we have Permissions. Now, permissions are something that are unique to the Android operating system. When you want to access things within the, the device, you have to uh, indicate the permissions ahead of time. If you've ever installed an app on your Android phone or tablet, you'll see that little uh, overview before you install it, and it says this app wants to access the internet, it wants to steal your phone addresses, stuff like that. That's where you indicate here what permissions that you want. For now, uh, we have the internet permission checked, and you can change this and I'll show you another time how to uh, wh where these features are set. 
Uh, also, we have platform settings, and for Android, we don't have any specific platform settings. Those come into play for other operating systems. All right, so with that, make sure you have the blank template selected, and down here where you can't see it, go ahead and choose Finish. Now, you're saying to yourself, Brent, what about server settings? What about build paths? Well, those are more advanced features, and those are things that uh, will be covered in other tutorials, but for now, this is all we need. All right, so here we are. Notice that Flash Builder has automatically created the folders and given us a few files, and they're linked in a few other packages that we need to build with. Notice uh, we have the simple application.mxml file open. I'm going to go ahead and close this start page because we don't need it anymore. And notice that we're sitting at the main root tag is application. Now, if you've done Flex 4 work before, or even Flex 3, you know, we have these tags, and if you've done, say, Air apps, you would see like windowed application or window application. So this tag may seem familiar for, to you, and it is. It's uh, basically just the basic Spark application tag. Now, let's go ahead and switch over to design view, and I want you to notice a few things. Over here on the left, we have our components tab, and here we have specific components that have been optimized for mobile use. Now, what we mean by optimized for mobile use is that they've been skinned accordingly, so that there's kind of a new mobile skin, and we'll look at that in a second. And then there are certain components, Spark components, these are all based on the Spark components. Uh, certain components have not been optimized for mobile, and so they're not shown here. And you may be thinking, well, what if I want to use a data grid or I want to use some of these other things? Well, for now, you'll have to, uh, if you want to use some of these other components, really it's at your own risk and you have to know what you're doing. Now, for what our purposes are, we will just deal with the mobile optimized components. All right, so let's go ahead and drag a few things here. Let's click and drag a button, drag it to the stage. Let's do a checkbox. And how about a label? Now, I want you to notice a few things. If you're familiar with some of the other Flex components, you'll notice that, for example, this button is uh, much larger than the average button you'd find on a web page. Well, the reason for that, of course, is we're dealing with a mobile device. Now, notice up here at the top, we have an option that says a device. Now, we can choose a device, and here we have a list of popular Android devices, and the one I'm going to target is the Motorola Droid 2. Now, you probably didn't see anything change, but basically the uh, size changed so that, let me go ahead and choose Fit so you can kind of see this. So here we're getting the uh, 480 by 800 size, I believe, for the Motorola Droid 2. Now if I change that, say I go to the Droid X, which has a similar one, or say I go to the Motorola Zoom, now all of a sudden that's changed, you know, 800 by 1280. What this does is it allows you to preview how the components lay out and, and relative sizes. Notice also we have uh, portrait mode or landscape mode, so you can, you can get a sense of, of how those are laid out. So if we look at this, we've got our button, checkbox, and label. Now, notice these are much larger. If you look at the label, and uh, you come over here to the height of the label, and then notice the text is uh, it's a 16-point font for the label. If you're, you're familiar with the other web uh, components, the web component label is a little smaller. I believe it's around 12. So these, again, are optimized skins. Okay, so let's switch back over to source view and see what we've got. Now notice, of course, this is added the buttons and checkbox and label. And now let's uh, let's just walk through a quick example. Let's just do the old hello world. So below the declarations tag, I'm gonna add another tag. And uh, actually, let me show you something here. I'm gonna back up one second. Check this out. Now, one of the new features of Flash Builder 4.5 is the ability to do code completion, which of course we've had for a while. But we have also the idea, the ability to generate uh, event handler. So 
let's just uh, the event I want to listen for is a click event and I'll go ahead and press return and now notice what it says it says generate click handler so I'll go ahead and cl click that and lo and behold we get a script tag and then a function and already it's given us this button one click handler now notice how it uh, kind of named it for us now if, if you have an ID of course it'll it'll recognize that but but see how it's automatically generated and they, these are the new code templates and event handler generation that's new for 4.5 all right so let's go down here and let you have our label let's go ahead and give it an ID in order to reference it so I press ID and if I press return then I can go ahead and give this an ID and let's just say this the uh, hello label We'll even lowercase that just for the sake of being cool. All right, now up here, let's say, okay, when this button has been clicked, we want this label to change. So we're going to say hello label dot text equals, and we're going to call this, we're going to say, hey, Brent, what's up? Check that out. Okay, now go ahead and we're gonna press Control S or Command S to save this. Now let's review what we've done. We've got our button, we've got a click event handler, and it's gonna when it gets called, we're going to change the text on the hello label to say, hey Brent, what's up? Okay, now you're saying, hey guys, hey, 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 and somebody's raising their hand, Brent, 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 and they're pounding the keyboard, Brent, Brent, Brent. What is this mouse event? What are you what are you doing? This is this is a mobile phone. There's no mouse on the mobile phone. And I'm thinking, well, well yeah, of course there's no mouse. Well, this is something that you're going to see works just as well uh, for most cases, right? So you're thinking, well, what about touch events? What about this? What about Steve Jobs? What about all that? Well, this works just as well. A click event is a click event, right? Which means you've pressed on the button and you've released over that button and you want, you get that click event. Well, whether it's a mouse or a finger, it's gonna happen. Now, the good thing about using it for mouse events like this is you get the, it works on the desktop when you're running it in the simulator as well as on the device. Now, if you were to change this to say a touch event, then you wouldn't get this triggered on the desktop when you're when you're uh, testing it in the simulator. So that's one little thing to think of. And another reason is the touch events are helpful only if you're really taking advantage of some of the new features of a touch event, like the touch points, multi-touch, stuff like that. So we're happy with what this is. And the next thing we're gonna do is talk about the run configurations.